University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Around 130 teams applied to take part in this contest. 28 have done so. And now, as we begin the quarter-final round, only the best eight remain. They are Imperial College London, Newcastle University, Nuffield College Oxford, Liverpool University, St Catharines College Cambridge, St John's College Oxford, and the two competing tonight, the University of York and Peterhouse Cambridge. To progress to the semi-final stage, our Byzantine rules demand a team must win two quarter-final matches. A team that loses two matches, therefore, leaves the contest, and a team that wins one match but loses another must play and win a game to go through. To add even further to the team's happiness, from now on, the questions get harder. Now, the team from the University of York got here by beating Manchester University in round one and Christ College Cambridge in round two. Their accumulated score is 490, earned with an impressively broad range of knowledge and, of course, whatever intellectual comfort comes from their plastic duck. With an average age of 22, let's meet the York team again. Hello, my name is Barto Jolilo Binier. I'm from London and I'm studying history. Hello, I'm Sam Smith. I'm from Guernsey and I study chemistry. And this is their captain. Hello, my name's David Landon Cole. I'm from Yeovil in Somerset and I'm studying politics. Hi, I'm Joseph McLaughlin. I'm from Oldham in Lancashire and I'm studying chemistry. Now, the team from Peterhouse, Cambridge, beat the University of Glasgow in round one and the medics of St George's, London, in round two with an accumulated score of 380. They probably learned by now not to base their answers on snippets of information from High School Musical, but that aside, they too have impressed in both their matches with the breadth of their knowledge. With an average age of 20, let's meet the Peterhouse team again. Hello, I'm Thomas Langley. I'm, I'm from Newcastle-upon-Tyne and I'm reading history. Hello, I'm Oscar Powell, I'm from York, and I'm reading Geological Sciences. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Hannah Woods, I'm from Manchester, and I'm studying for a PhD in History. Hello, I'm Julian Sutcliffe, I'm from Reading in Berkshire, and I'm also reading History. Well, I'm sure you know I'm supposed to recite the rules at this point, but let's not bother, let's just get on with it. Ten points at stake for this. Fingers on the buzzers, please. What term was used in the title of a book of 2014 by Owen Jones, subtitled... Jean Shirley de la Vigne. The Establishment. The Establishment is correct, yes. <laughs> right, you get the first set of bonuses. York, they're on a museum. Firstly, for five points, open to the public in 1759, which museum was located in Montague House in Bloomsbury until it was demolished in the 1840s to make way for the present-day building. The British Museum. The British Museum. Correct. The British Museum was established in 1753 as a result of which physician and naturalist having bequeathed his collection to the nation in return for a payment of £20,000 to his heirs? Sir Hans Sloan. OK. Sir Hans Sloan. Correct. In 1972, an exhibition that proved to be the most popular in the museum's history, with over one and a half million visitors, Displayed artefacts from which country? Egypt. Yes, Egypt. 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 Yeah. Egypt. Egypt is correct. It was the Tutankhamun <laughs> exhibition. Ten points at stake for this. Fingers on the buzzers. Its five square miles have defined what decades of moviegoers think of when they imagine the American West. These words of a film critic refer to which national park on the borders of Arizona and Utah? Yonk Shirley de Lubinia. Monument Valley. Monument Valley is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on excess in classical literature, York. A plate bearing 12 dishes, each based on a sign of the zodiac, and a wild boar stuffed with live blackbirds are among the dishes served during the feast given by which character in the Satyricon of Petronius Arbiter? Is that the, the Roman emperor who... Uh, was that Elagabalus? Nero? Or... No, no, Elagabalus famously overrated. Okay. But... Yeah. Uh, nominate Smith. Elagabalus? No, it's Trimalchio. And secondly, the Emperor Vitellius enjoyed a dish of pike liver with the brains of pheasants and peacocks and the tongues of flamingos, according to which Roman historian in the Twelve Caesars? Mm. It's actually a twins. Live in the Twelve Caesars? Mm, I've got the answer. Maybe. Answer. Maybe. 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 Maybe.
And finally, having indulged to excess, Aristophanes suffers an attack of hiccups which causes him to miss his first turn to speak in which work of the 4th century BC? Dialogues. No, it's the Symposium of Plato. Right. Ten points for this. In topology, what five-letter term denotes the Cartesian product of two circles, while in three-dimensional geometry, it describes the shape of the tokamak confinement vessel used in some experimental... <laughs> new Your coal. Taurus. Taurus is right. <laughs> your bonuses, York, this time are on planned astronomical instruments. In each case, I would like to have either the full name or the abbreviation. Firstly, on completion in around 2020, what will be the world's largest radio telescope by collecting area? Its headquarters are at Manchester University's Jodrell Bank Observatory, with locations in both Australia and South Africa. It's the square kilometre array. Okay. Square kilometre array. Correct. Uh -huh. To be sighted on Cerro Pachon in Chile, which optical telescope with a wide field of view and a large primary mirror is designed to provide a detailed 3D map of the universe? That could be the overwhelmingly large telescope. Yeah, that sounds large. We think this may be the overwhelmingly large telescope. It may well be overwhelmingly large, but it's called the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. And finally, a successor to Hubble and named after a NASA official, which instrument is due for launch in 2018 and will be the largest infrared telescope in space? Thank Goddard. Um, OK. Anyone? Goddard. No, it's the James Webb Space Telescope. Ten points for this. Lord Fairfax and the Earl of Leven were two of the commanders who were victorious over Prince Rupert at which battle? Ah. Fort... Pete House Langley. Marston Moore. Marston Moore is correct. <laughs> right, first set of bonuses, Peter House, are on a French thinker. Who wrote Les Provinciales in 1656 and 57 in defence of Antoine Arnaud, a Jansenist put on trial before the Faculty of Theology in Paris for his controversial religious works? It's, it's Blaise Pascal. Pascal. Correct. Including humorous attacks on casuistry, the Provincialis are a series of 18 letters that deal with divine grace and the ethical code of which religious order? Uh, Jesuits. Jesuits. Correct. The necessity of the wager on whether to accept the Christian faith is perhaps the best-known chapter of which collection of writings by Pascal? Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. Nominate, nominate Langley. Ponce. Ponce is correct, or thoughts? Yes. <laughs> right, we're going to take a picture round. For your picture starter, you're going to see a musical stave with two notes representing a harmonic interval. For ten points, I want the two-word name by which the interval between those notes is known. York McLaughlin. Dominant fifth. Nope. Anyone like to buzz from Peter House? Peter House Sutcliffe. Augmented fifth. That's no, a perfect fifth. Right, we'll take the picture bonuses in a moment or two and we get another starter question in the meantime. Nominated in 2011 for the Grammy Record and Song of the Year, which song by the group Bon Iver is named after the epoch that's the latest interval of geological... Yorkshire Lee de Lobinia. Holocene. Holocene is correct, yes. <laughs> right, so you get the picture bonuses then, York. There are three more musical staves with harmonic intervals represented. Five points in each case if you can give me the name of the intervals. Firstly... That's a minor third. Minor third. Correct. Secondly, by what name are these two equivalent intervals known? They are augmented fourth or diminished fifth. Augmented fourth or diminished fifth. Or a tritone, yes. And finally, how is this interval commonly known? Oh, it's an octave. An octave. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for the start of question. And fear no more the heat of the sun, nor the furious winter's rages. Thou thy worldly task hast done. Home art gone, and tain thy wages. These words appear in which play by Shakespeare, variously classified as both a tragedy and a romance? Beat House Woods. Romeo and Juliet. Nope. Yonk Smith. Anthony and Cleopatra. No, it's Cymbeline. Ten points for this. Introduced by the US physiologist Walter Bradford Cannon, what phrase denotes a physical response that is mobilised by the secretion of adrenaline after an organism is confronted with a situation... Pete House Powell. Fight and flight. Fight or flight is correct, yes. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on the plays of Richard Bean. 
Firstly, One Man, Two Governors was Richard Bean's 2011 adaptation of The Servant of Two Masters, a comedy of 1746 by which Italian playwright? I need a play, but not the author. Do we know any Italian playwrights? I don't, I don't think we can. No. Pass. That was by Carlo Goldoni. Secondly, first performed at the Royal National Theatre in June 2014, which work concerns the press, the police and the political establishment and centres on the activities of a tabloid newspaper known as the Free Press? Shall I just guess something? Guess. Hacked. No, it's Great Britain. Also first performed in 2014, which play is Bean's retelling of the colonisation of an eponymous island by Fletcher Christian and the Bounty Mutineers? Pitt can. Correct. Ten points for this. John F. Kennedy is one of only two US presidents to be buried in Arlington Cemetery. Who's the other? He served as Secretary for War under Theodore Roosevelt and, following his presidency, became Chief Justice of the Supreme... Pete Hal Sutcliffe. Taft. Taft is right. William Howard Taft. <laughs> These bonuses are on graph theory, Peter House. Firstly... A simple graph is defined as a set of vertices interconnected by edges. What term is used for the number of edges incident to a given vertex? Um, it's something like degree or order. Order. I don't know. Order. 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 No, it was degree. Oh. <laughs> what name is given to a simple graph in which every vertex has the same degree? Um, maybe it's homogeneous. I don't know. Homogeneous. I don't know, but go for it. Homogeneous. No, it's regular. <laughs> Often denoted by a capital letter K with a numerical subscript, what name is given to a graph in which every vertex shares an edge with every other vertex? Um, so, is that... I, I really don't know. Um, I mean, the graphs can't count as polygons. I can't remember. <sighs> Just try polygon. It's completely wrong. But... Polygon. No, you're quite right. It is completely wrong. It's complete. <laughs> Ten points for this. Created as an alternative to the Prix Goncourt, which literary prize has been awarded to a French novel every year since 1933? It takes its name from the Paris Café, noted for the patronage of... Pete Housewoods. Le Demago. Prix de Demago. That's correct. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses, this time on a novel, Peter House. Published in 1818, which novel opens with a letter written in St Petersburg addressed to a Mrs Saville in England? Do you know 1818? It's not going to be something like crime and punishment. English? Do we know? I think it's in English. I don't know. I don't know. St Petersburg? Um, I can't find 1818. When's Vanity Fair? Yeah, go for it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Vanity Fair. No, it's Frankenstein. <laughs> Frankenstein was conceived during the much-cited sojourn in 1816 of Mary Shelley and four others at the Villa Diodati on the shores of which lake? Co is it Como? Is it Como? Or... Yeah. Was it Garda? Como or Garda? I don't know. Lake Como. No, it's Lake Geneva. Oh. Quote, did I request thee, maker, from my clay to mould me man? Did I solicit thee from darkness to promote me? Unquote. These words appear on the original title page of Frankenstein and are taken from which epic poem? Um, Paradise Lost. Should we try that? Yeah. Paradise Lost. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Listen carefully. The name of the university based at New Haven, Connecticut, the name of the unit of pressure of around one atmosphere, and a word meaning sooner than expected... York Smith. Bar. B-A-R. No, I'm afraid you lose five points. May all be made using letters of the name of which food grain? Wheat House Pole. Uh, wheat. No, it's not. No, it's barley, as in Yale, Bar and Early. Uh, of course. <laughs> right, ten points for this starter question. According to ancient tradition, Pyrrho of Elis was the first philosopher to take on the view that nothing can be known with certainty. From the Greek for inquiring, what term describes this? <laughs> Your coal. Solipsism. No, Peter House. One of you buzz, come on. Peter House Langley. Scepticism. Scepticism. Skeptics is correct, yes. <laughs> Just a slip of the tongue, I think, York, but it's cost you the points and the opportunity of these bonuses, which are on Greek mythology and British opera, Peter House. Based largely on Homer's Iliad, King Priam premiered in 1962 and was the second major opera by which British composer, also known for the Midsummer Marriage, and the Knot Garden. I really don't know. Is that is that too late for Britain? Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know any more composers. Can we, can we make a guess? Know. We don't know. And that was by Sir Michael Tippett. First performed in 1988, Greek is an opera based on Stephen Burkhoff's reworking of Sophocles' tragedy, Oedipus the King, and is set by which British composer? Do we have any idea? I don't know any British We don't. Um, you can guess one. I mean, crappy one with Imogen or Elgar or Judas. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. I don't know. No, sorry. We don't know, sorry. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's Mark Antony Turnage. Which British composer's works include the operas The Mask of Orpheus in 1986 and The Minotaur in 2008? I mean, sometimes, you know, you just... We just don't know. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> it's a bit familiar, this lament. <laughs> it's Harrison Birtwistle. Ten points for this. Answer promptly here. In the 200 years before the accession of Henry VII, six kings of England were deposed or killed in battle. Name three of them. <laughs> Yorkshire Lee de Lobinier. Richard, uh, James the Fourth. Richard who? Richard the Third. Yes. James the Fourth. Nope. Uh, Anyone like to buzz from Peterhouse? Peterhouse Sutcliffe. Richard the Third, Henry the Sixth, and Edward the Second. That's correct, yes. Well done. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses on biochemistry, Peterhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Members of which major group of biological molecules contain an amine group, a hydrogen atom, and a carboxylic acid group attached to a tetravalent carbon atom? Amino acids, yeah. Amino acids. Correct. Which amino acid contains two aromatic rings and is a precursor of the neurotransmitter serotonin? Is it tryptophan? Shall I try that? I think... Oh, no, it is. It's okay. tryptophan. Tryptophan. It is. What is the seven-letter name of the only cyclic proteinogenic Amino acid, that is I-M-I-N-O, specified in the genetic code. Only cyclic. No, I do, I do. What's proline. I think proline. it's proline. I don't know, but well, well, I try it. Proline. Proline is right. <laughs> We're going to take a music round. For your music starter, you're going to hear a piece of classical music. Ten points if you can give me the name of the British composer. York McLaughlin. Vaughan Williams. It is Vaughan Williams, yes. <laughs> Part of his symphony number no. six. So that was from the first recording of Vaughan Williams' Sixth Symphony, conducted by Leopold Stokowski, renowned for his concert and recording premieres of many 20th century works. For your bonuses, three more pieces of music conducted by Stokowski, each being the first recording made of that piece. For five points each, I want the name of the composer, please. Firstly, this Russian composer. <laughs> Prokofiev. No, that's Shostakovich's sixth. And secondly, this French composer. Uh, Nomine McLaughlin. Messian. Correct. And finally, this Nordic composer. Sibelius. Correct. Well done. <laughs> OK, let's start a question now. In degrees, at what angle off the axis of sunlight is a rainbow formed? Pete Howes Powell. 42. Correct. <laughs> you get three bonuses on language families, Peter House. Firstly, Turkic and Mongolian are two branches of which broad language family named after a range of mountains on the borders of China, Russia, Mongolia and Kazakhstan? Is it... Is it... Oh, oh, no, there is... Is it... 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 Is at Urals. Correct. Georgian, Abkhaz and Chechen are languages belonging to families with names referring to which mountain range? Caucasus. Caucasus. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> in the title of a work first published in 1905, the German sociologist Max Weber related the Protestant ethic to the spirit of which... Pete House Langley. Capitalism. Correct. 
So you get a set of bonuses now on World War II, Peter House. In August 1942, which country became the first in South America to declare war on the Axis? It later sent an expeditionary force to fight in Italy. I, I really don't know. Argentina? Can we make an educated guess? No, it won't be Argentina. Because uh, they were the they, Yeah, they were. They were. Um, the rat one. Brazil? Just depending on what Argentina is. Um, I'll make a random guess unless yeah. anyone can Brazil? make an educated okay. one. Chile? Yeah, yeah. Brazil? Brazil. Yeah. Brazil. Awesome. Brazil. Very educated guess, it's right. The Firestone Plantation in which African country was a major supplier of rubber to the Allies? The country in question declared war on Germany and Japan in January 1944. I'd assume the Congo if it's rubber. Yeah. Um, Congo. Okay. The Congo. No, it was Liberia. As a precondition for participation in the United Nations Conference, which Mediterranean country declared war on Germany in February 1945? There was no military involvement. Um, I don't know things about history, um, so come, um, would you leave? Italy? Mm. Italy? February 1945. No, that'd be too early. Um, not, there was no military not Spain, not country. Greece. So possibly... Oh, maybe possibly Turkey. Turkey, yeah. Just Turkey. Turkey. Turkey's correct. <laughs> right, another picture round for you. Your picture starter, you're going to see a portrait. Ten points if you can name the subject depicted. Your Cole. Cardinal Richelieu. It is Cardinal Richelieu, yes. <laughs> now, for your picture bonuses, York, you're going to see portraits of three more cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church, this time all Englishmen. Five points for each you can name. Firstly... Uh, that's John Henry Newman. Newman, yeah. Newman. That is Newman, yes. Secondly, who's this? That's, um, De La Pole. Uh, I don't know his first name. Pole. Just say Pole. Pole, Del Pole. Pole is right. And finally, who's this? Wolsey. That's Wolsey. It is Cardinal Wolsey, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ten points for this. What common unit corresponds most closely to two micro years? Peter House Powell. A minute. Correct. Your bonuses are on areas of outstanding natural beauty, Peter House. In each case, name the AONB from the list of locations. All three answers have two word names that include the name of a county. Firstly, Farway, Otterton, Budley Salterton, and Newton Poppleford. Do we have any? Um, I think that's I think that's one of the moors. Do we know the county that the, the Yorkshire moors. Otterton rings a bell? I think it's the, the North Yorkshire Moors. Are... A three word Yorkshire Dales? Yorkshire Dales. I mean, I don't, I I don't think go... those places sound. Like I don't know. Go, go for the Yorkshire Dales, but I, okay. I should know it really because I'm. But go, go for it. We're going to try Yorkshire Dales. Nowhere near. It's East Devon. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, Worms Hill, Chevening, Bluebell Hill, and Seven Oaks Weald. Kent. That's Kent. Kent Downs. Kent Downs. I don't know. Marshes. Try it. No, it won't be marshes. Well, I don't think. I don't know. Go for Kent. Say Kent Downs. The Kent Downs. Downs. Correct. <laughs> and finally, Craster, Beale, Seahouses, Ammouth and Bamborough. Uh, Norfolk North. Broads hasn't come up yet. Uh, they're there in the north, they're the north, north, north east. east. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Northumberland what? Uh, Norfolk Broads. Northumberland Moors. Broads. Broads. They're in Northumberland. Northumberland. Oh. Just, just tell me, just, just say Northumberland. It's a two-word thing. Northumberland two Dales. Come on. There won't be Dales. Go for Hills. Northumberland. Northumberland Moors. No, it's Northumberland Coast. Oh. Ten points for this. Listen carefully. Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address of 1863 could have opened with the words 87 years ago. Instead, he chose specifically... Pete House Sunclip. Four score and seven. Four score and seven. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses this time, Peter House, are on South Korea. What is the second largest city of South Korea? It's situated on the southeastern tip of the Korean peninsula, around 300 kilometres from Seoul. Do you know any other cities apart from Incheon? No. Nominate Sutcliffe. Incheon? No, it's Busan or Busan. 80 kilometres north of Busan, which city was the capital of the Silla Kingdom for almost 1,000 years until 935? Its historic areas are inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. That might be I don't know. I, only, I don't know many cities in South Korea. Incheon. No, that's Jonggongju. And finally, which city at the mouth of the Han River is the main seaport of Seoul? That's in 1950, right. UN forces landed there in an attempt to turn back the communist invasion. We think that is Incheon. That was Incheon, yes. <laughs> so three minutes to go, ten points for this. 
What two-word English name is often given to Platt Dutch, a vernacular language spoken... Jörg Smith. Low German. Low German is right. Your bonuses this time are on botany, York. Specifically, the floral formula, which records the structure of a plant by means of symbols, letters and numbers. Firstly, in a floral formula, what is represented by the letter A? Colour of flower. No, it's the androecium, the stamens. Yeah. What is represented by the letter K? Uh, is it begins with a K? Or C. Carpal. Mm. Carpal. I know it's the calyx or sepals. Oh, okay. And what is represented by the letter C? Carpal. No, that's the corolla or petals. <laughs> Ten points for this. In astronomy and calendar studies, what five letter word commonly follows metonic, calypic, sothic, and saros? Your cold scale. No, anyone want to buzz from Peter House? Quickly. Peter House Powell, orbit. No, it's cycle, and I had to find you five points, uh, York, because that was an incorrect interruption. So, another starter question. How many years separate the start of the Seven Years' War from the beginning of the Suez Crisis? Peter House Woods. Six. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> York McLaughlin. 200. 200 is correct. <laughs> <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses, York, on invertebrate physiology. Firstly, found in the plasma of many mollusks and crustacea, hemocyanins are metalloproteins transporting what substance? Oh, oxygen. Oxygen, yeah. yeah. Oxygen. 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 Correct. What metal atom in hemocyanin binds to oxygen? Copper. Correct. What colour is hemocyanin when oxygenated? Uh, blue. Blue. Correct. Ten points for this. Which US state is bordered by Washington and Oregon to the west and Montana and Wyoming? Look, McLaughlin. Idaho. Idaho is correct. You get a set of bonuses this time. On novels with narratives confined to a single day. Firstly, taking place on a single day in June 1923, which novel opens with its title character announcing that she would buy the flowers herself? Mrs Dalloway. Correct. Taking place on a single day in January 1951, which novel opens with Rivali being sounded at 5 o'clock in the morning by a hammer hitting a length of rail? No, it's not. Don't know. That was one day in the life of Ivan Denisovich. Right. And finally, taking place on February the 15th, 2003, which novel opens with a neurosurgeon rising from bed at 3.40 in the morning? Don't know. No. That was Ian McEwan's Saturday. Ten points for this. In physics, what character in uppercase can represent a constant energy density in empty space, while in lowercase it can represent wavelength? Pete House Powell. F. Anyone like to buzz from York? York Smith. Uh, new. No, it's Lambda. Ten points for this. What anglicised form of the name of the city of his birth appeared in the title of John, Duke of Lancaster, the father of Henry IV? Peter Al Sutcliffe. Gaunt. Gaunt is correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonus. And that the gong. We all have 165. Peter House have 185. I thought you were going to pull off a sensational recovery there, York. But 165, you'll be coming back anyway. But next time you come back, you will have to win. Peter House, congratulations to you. You've got to win one more to stay in the contest and go through to the semi-finals. That's all. I hope you can join us next time for another quarter-final match. But until then, it's goodbye from York University. Goodbye. goodbye. It's goodbye from Peter House, Cambridge. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you.